What's up guys, Kyle here again, and today we are gonna check out the Grindstein plugin from Audiority. Let's do it. All right guys, hope you're doing great out there today. If this is your first time here at my channel, my name is Kyle and what I do is I take awesome high gain amps, overdrives, guitar cabs, and plugins, record them with a simple SM57 setup and I give you guys the unprocessed audio on your end. So if you're into E standard thrash riffs, drop C hardcore riffs, and dudes that can't quit bumping into their desk when they're talking to the camera, you're in the right place. Consider hitting that like button and subscribing on your way out if you like this video so you don't miss any more of my stuff. Thanks. All right, guys, so that intro track that you guys heard was 100% the Audiority Grindstein plugin and nothing else. So I did one track left, one track right with the guitars, and the bass I actually recorded with the Grindstein plugin or the Grindstein. Am I going to get yelled at by angry Germans for not pronouncing that correctly? Cut me a little credit, guys. At least I say Dietzel, okay? But yes, every stringed instrument that you guys heard in that intro track was recorded using the Grindstein plugin, and honestly, I think it came out really, really cool. This plugin obviously is meant to be somewhat modeled after an HM2, so it's gonna sound nasty, it's gonna sound kinda ugly and harsh, but I mean, that is, that is what we're going for here. That is exactly what we're trying to accomplish. And as amazing as I think that this thing is on guitar for getting those dirty, super grimy tones that are HM2 inspired, I thought it sounded just as good, if not better, on that bass track. It really kind of made the bass sit in the mix in a really gnarly but pleasing way at the same time. I don't know. It's really hard to describe, but um, I'm really happy with how that mix came out. As I've told you guys many times before, I don't really know what I'm doing with mixing, so I'll just be straight up with you guys. I did do a couple notches in the high mid frequencies on the guitars because there were some frequencies in there that just were kind of clashing with the cymbals a little bit and sticking out is a little too harsh. So I did notch out a little bit on each guitar track. The guitar track on the left was more on the HM2 side of the plugin and the guitar track on the right was more on the amp side of the plugin. If you guys don't know what I'm referring to, this plugin actually has a mix knob, and we'll get into that a little bit more as we kind of look at the plugin together. But but the Grindstein pedal has a mix knob where when you have it more to the left, it's more of just like a, a preamp style circuit, a regular, just kind of flat tone in order for you to kind of sculpt, throw other pedals on top of it. On the right is where the HM2 circuit starts to come into play and you can kind of blend those two as you see fit depending on how nasty you want to get or how much more subdued you want to get. So I made sure to kind of include a little bit of each on either track. So the tracks are going to kind of contrast a little bit. Uh, one will be a little bit grindier and a little bit nastier. The other one will be a little bit more kind of just in the mix and uh, a little bit smoother in comparison. So this pedal is actually a real life pedal. If you guys aren't familiar with it, it was developed with Christian Cola of Cola Kella Studios. I'm sure you guys know his YouTube channel if you are watching this demo. This pedal was developed with him in conjunction with Clearton. Clearton or Cleartone? Clear, Clear. I'm gonna butcher every single foreign pronunciation in this video, just letting you guys know right off the bat. But yeah, we're gonna stick to Clearton for the rest of the video. So it was developed in conjunction with Christian Cola and Clearton as he had some ideas of what he wanted that HM2 sound to be. It has been refined, it was stuck into this pedal as you see here. Well, Christian, Clearton, and Audiority all got together and turned it into a plugin. So we're gonna dive into this a little bit today. I'm gonna start by telling you guys that Clearton and Audiority did reach out to me to demo this for you guys. They provided a free copy of the software, but as always, you guys are gonna get my 100% honest thoughts and opinions regardless 
of whether they had provided the software for free or not. So please keep that in mind. All right, guys. So I am here in the plugin. All right, guys. So I have opened up the plugin and I have touched nothing. This is exactly as it should appear when you guys open it up for the first time. And I'm just going to show you guys how it sounds right off the rip. <laughs> So yeah, off the bat guys, it's pretty gnarly sounding. It's not as crazy as it could be, and it's also not as smooth as it could be. You've got room to go on either side, but with the mix knob slightly over to the right here, it's gonna be a little bit more on that HM2 style of grind. But yeah, in this plugin, you actually get quite a bit of stuff. So it's a really good value in my opinion. The first thing in your signal chain is going to be the schnoz or schnauze, I'm guessing that's probably how it's pronounced. But anyways, yeah, it's got a gate so you can gate your input and keep things nice and silent. But it also over here has a boost. And I believe that this is just kind of like a clean line boost. So when you click that in, it's gonna basically up the volume of your guitar into the front end of the grindstein portion of the plugin. <laughs> Yeah, so it's essentially just kind of bumping that volume up. So so the higher you turn that up, the more of an input signal the grind scene's gonna seem, see and it's gonna make it sound hotter. But we're gonna leave that off for now. And of course, second in the chain is the Grindstein itself. And then third in the chain, you have this EQ, Fleisch, I think is how you would pronounce it. But yeah, it's got all sorts of controls here. So none of these actually really describe, they do describe what they're doing, but they don't. So you're gonna have to really kind of play around with them to figure out exactly how they're going to affect the overall tone of the plugin. But generally dozers kind of like your low end cleansings, like low mids, scoop is gonna be a mid scoop, chainsaw will add some upper mids and then blade will add some top end bite and presence. So this is a really cool feature. And again, you can kind of take it in or out of the signal if you want when you turn it off the eyes of the pig are no longer glowing red. When you turn it on, you're back to hell. So finally, in this simulation, we have a cab impulse response section. These cabs were created by none other than Christian Cola. And if you guys know, if you guys have tried his Bogren stuff or any of his freebies on his YouTube videos, they always sound great. So we've got seven different IRs to choose from, and they all sound pretty vastly different. They all color the sound quite a bit. So this is the modern gore. Here's modern disgust. More gore. Filth and slime. So as you can tell, each one makes a pretty big difference on your tone. We're gonna go back to modern gore. We're gonna go over to the grindstein portion. So this is really where you're gonna spend the main part of your time. So you've got a phase switch here, a bright and dark switch, an on off boost with its own control knob. Down on the bottom here, these three controls will have more of an effect when the mix is over to the left to the amp or the preamp portion of the pedal. And then when you go over to the right, this is where your mid cut, your grind and your high controls are going to come more into effect. And then finally over here, you have a master volume that is going to uh, affect both channels equally. It's just gonna affect the output into the EQ and the cab section. So let's start it in the middle. I'm not gonna touch any controls. We're gonna turn this boost off. And let's just see how it sounds. All right, so let's turn it to the left more. This is gonna be more the preamp side. As you can tell, it's much darker, much smoother. Let's go over to the right. This is the HM2 side. And that is much more grindy and nasty and nasally and unsettling. So if you're going for the HM2 style of tone, that is the side that you're gonna wanna be on. You can even throw this, lower your gain and throw it in front of another plugin if you wanted to, if you wanted to throw it in front of like a JCM 800 plugin or something with lower gain and kind of almost use it as if it were an HM2 style pedal in front of another amp, you could do that. But we're not gonna do that. We're gonna keep that mix generally right in the middle here. And let's start playing with some stuff. Let's turn that boost on and let's turn the gain up on the preamp portion of the pedal a little bit. All right.
right, so we've got some EQ controls. Let's add a little bit of bass. Let's pull some treble out. <laughs> Sounds pretty good to my ears. It's it's like it's got a little bit of a crunchy grind to it. It's definitely not uh, a smooth tone by any means. It's still fairly abrasive, even with that mix in the middle. Uh, let's add some more grind from the HM2 portion. <laughs> All right, so that adds a ton of those HM2 upper mids. Let's pull the grind to right above noon and then let's pull those highs back. All right, let's pull that mid cut up. So with the mid cut up, it kind of makes things a little bit more low mid focused and chunkier. It takes out some of those nasally mids. I actually like it with the mid cut placed higher. All right, so let's put it on the dark setting. I actually like it on the dark setting a little bit better. It kind of smooths out the top end. Let's add a little bit more grind since we pulled that mid cut up and let's push that boost up a little bit. <laughs> You get quite a bit of variance, and I mean, even without touching any of the other controls, even if we just dial it to the left on the mix. It sounds a lot darker, a lot smoother if we dial it to the right. It sounds a lot nastier and more nasally. So let's go over to that EQ and kind of see what that does. So right now we have the EQ in. Here's the plugin with the EQ removed from the signal. So that definitely adds, the way it's set, it adds some more high-end frequencies. Let's actually bump the dozer and the cleansing and the chainsaw and just see what happens. Very HM2 just by adding that chainsaw. Let's pull that out. Let's add some scoop. All right, so that actually takes a lot of that upper mid grind out by pulling that scoop up to noon. Let's pull the chainsaw up and leave the scoop where it is. So very, very HM2 on the end there for sure. Uh, let us go finally over to the cab. I'm actually going to disengage the EQ. Okay guys, so finally on the cab section, we have a bunch of different cab IRs to choose from. So as you can tell, each cab makes a massive difference. So if you want to make it gnarlier, It's very easy to do that just by switching the cab selection and nothing else. There's so much cool stuff packed into this plugin, guys. I think it's a great value, honestly, because not only do you get an HM2 style circuit on here, which you can go full HM2 if you want to, but you actually get just a general kind of preamp circuit too that you can kind of shape the way that you see fit. And even though the controls are kind of limited down here, 
for that portion, you can go into the EQ and really start playing around with things and getting a lot of different tones. All right, I'm just having fun here, guys. Honestly, I think these tones are really cool. Overall, it's, it's a lot of really uh, fun stuff to play with. <laughs> There's a lot of versatility here. I'm just gonna play around with a couple more tones real quick and we'll call it a day, but I think that this thing is a lot of fun and it's a really good value if you are looking to get a plugin with a lot of features but does not sound like every other modern metal style plugin out there where it's really smooth and really refined sounding. This is just all out nasty tones. <laughs> I really love how low mid focus that this particular cab IR is, the Wolverine. That one sounds really good. If we go back to modern gore, it's going to be a lot more upper mids. <laughs> but it still sounds cool. I still like what we're getting out of that. Let's do the blood path. Let's try one more modern disgust. All right, I'm just playing random stuff at this point, but you guys get the lots of versatility in here. Not only do you get a gate and a built in volume boost, but you get an entire suite here with the Grindstein that includes an EQ, two preamp circuits that are blendable to your desire, a fully functioning EQ section that makes a massive difference, and a fully functioning cab impulse response section that has seven awesome and very different sounding cabinets. So you're really getting a great value for your money here, guys, and this is something that I am really enjoying playing myself. So with all that being said, I can definitely absolutely recommend this thing if you are looking for some super gnarly style death metal black metal tones even industrial stuff this would be great for but if you're looking for you know like a standard 5150 or your standard boosted marshall type tones this is not for you this is definitely for people who are going for more of the extreme metal thing and although i think that you could probably tweak it and play with it to get a little bit more of a contemporary style high gain guitar tone I just don't think that that's what this is for. This is definitely for the alternative guys that are going for the really gross, grimy, nasty tones. And that's why I love it because it stands out for that reason, 100%. All right, guys, with all that being said, the price of this plugin is 99 euro, which is roughly like 115, 120 US dollars if you're in the States. Again, I fully think that it is worth that. And if you guys are interested in purchasing this plugin, I actually have an affiliate link down below in the description of this video. You guys go down there and you buy it through that link. I actually get a little kickback and it helps me out greatly. So I appreciate it. But if not, that's fine too. I still love you. But yeah, huge thanks if you guys watched and sat through this entire video of me messing around with this plugin. I hope that I did it justice and I hope that I kind of accurately showed and described its capabilities to you guys. I wanna say thanks again for Clearton. Christian Cola and Audiority all for reaching out to me and allowing me to be part of the release of this plugin, even though I'm like a month behind schedule and I apologize, but I very much appreciate the opportunity from them. This was a lot of fun for me. I hope that you guys found it helpful. And if you did, please go down, hit that like button, consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss anything else. In the month of November, I'm going to be putting up a ton of amp playthrough demos because I have a bunch of amps to burn through before I have to give them back to somebody. If you wanna support the channel, down in the description of this video is my affiliate link for this plugin, my Sweetwater affiliate link, my Patreon if you'd like to support the channel that way, or you can consider becoming a member of the Belligerent Amateur community by joining my Facebook group and Discord server. Again, all those links are down below in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out. Kyle here again. We'll see you guys next time.